Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with Valley PBS. Today we are chatting with Don Cameron, president of the California State Board of Food and Agriculture. Don has generously agreed to share some of his experience with us. Thank you, Don, for joining us today. Thanks, Mark. It's a pleasure to be with you. So agriculture looms so large in this area of the country. Talk about the California State Board and talk about the role of this board in advancing the interests of the agricultural industry. Well, the, uh, the State Board of Food and Ag is a group of growers, uh, social justice, and other members uh, that are involved in agriculture or use the food that we produce. Um, our, our main goal and our purpose is to advise the Secretary of Agriculture and the governor on different issues that involves uh, all aspects of agriculture. So we've, uh, we've had a very busy year. We've covered a lot of topics from uh, tariffs and trade to broadband uh, to many of the other issues that affect us. So you're shaping, you're shaping policy, but you're also shaping policy from personal experience. This is on the ground, boots on the ground, what you experience, what your members experience every day, and bringing that intelligence to the government, but also bringing that intelligence to each other so that you as a group can take your own individual actions as well. No, that's true. Um, we have uh, all aspects of agriculture uh, represented, and we have been having experts come and give their points of view and give their knowledge to the board and we've uh, been taking action, uh, writing letters to the governor, to, uh, to other legislators throughout the, uh, the state, and trying to affect change. So let's talk about the groundwater uh, and the water situation uh, first. In the West, water, water is the issue. Everything else is, sec is second. Talk about how that issue manifests itself in, in your area. So water is always an issue for farmers, uh, either not having enough or having too much or having it at the wrong time. Um, in 2014, the governor signed a, the groundwater sustainability uh, law, and by 2020, we have to have plans in place that are going to be the solution to how we're going to accomplish sustainability with our groundwater. We're working on that right now. We've developed new agencies that represent the growers in our area and other areas throughout the, uh, the basin that we farm in with the goal of finding uh, new ways, creative ways to, to uh, make our farmers more sustainable and uh, try to figure a way to increase or to stabilize our groundwater levels. It's been a big issue for us. We've seen declining levels over the years. And we knew a long, quite a long time ago that it needed to be corrected. In, in our area, our groundwater sustainability agency, we've already, essentially the growers have voiced their opinion that we are taxing the growers uh, to start the, uh, the change, really, to start building the infrastructure that's necessary. Uh, it's gonna be a big investment on, on their side. And really, there's not a lot of extra water to capture to fix the problem. Uh, water rights were established years ago and so really the only water available for capture right now is flood water when it comes. Uh, and with changing climate, we may see additional rainfall, additional floods, additional droughts, so much more unpredictable weather. So we feel that uh, groundwater recharge may be our only solution for the area to where we can start rebuilding and replenishing our aquifer. So recharge is actually a harvesting of water during flood times, during times when water is plentiful on the surface and getting it down into that protected aquifer and ensuring that it gets down there in, in good shape, also clean and not polluted and so on. Exactly. Um, and, and that takes a considerable investment. That's going to actually become part, harvesting water and storing water for later use is going to become part of the normal course of farming here in California? It will be. Um, I think in the past we relied only upon dams to uh, store water. We're looking at the ground under our feet to rebuild and store water so that it'll be available during times of drought um, so that we can use it uh, responsibly to produce food that uh, is sold throughout the, uh, the nation and the world. Now, another uh, major issue for uh, California agriculture is labor. 
is the fact that when the harvest season comes or when the planting season comes or when there's other work that, that is needed to be done, you need the labor then. You cannot defer and wait. You need the, the uh, skilled labor available. How is the uh, labor situation playing out in California right now? Well, we know in California that the, the agricultural workforce is aging. Um, we haven't had any big influxes of additional labor coming into California. There are programs, the H-2A program. It's a very cumbersome program that's difficult for most growers to use. Um, and that's really been the only source of new labor. Quite bureaucratic. In, it's very bureaucratic with uh, a lot of processes, and it's also expensive. So we worry a lot about the the labor force. When we plan what we're going to be growing next year, we're concerned that we're going to have enough labor to pick the crop and get to the end of the year successfully. So it, it's always difficult for us. We're looking at any mechanization that we can put in the field. We're using pepper harvesters to harvest certain uh, peppers, but those are usually going to a processor. If you want to go to the grocery store with those, you have to hand pick. Get you have pick. to be careful with it because our, our, our consumers don't want to see bruised fruit. They want to see perfect fruit in the store. In terms of, of, um, of how you plan, it also seems that these added complexities, these failures to resolve these problems is creating a much, a, a much increased planning requirement, um, business planning requirement, and it also significantly elevates financial risk. Uh, for each of the individuals who are engaged in agriculture. Could you comment a little uh, about that and, and how uh, the group helps the industry to deal with those issues? We take risk every day, and I think we're probably one of the biggest groups that actually take on risk. Uh, we have risks that we know, which is weather, uh, you know, rain, too much rain, not enough rain. But when we start thinking about some of the other uh, components that figure in on our risk and whether we're going to be successful at the end of the year, when we start having to think about you know, regulatory issues, uh, labor issues, how we're going to acquire the labor to get to the end of the year. Tariffs. It, it, yeah, we're, we're dealing with tariffs that uh, really wasn't an agricultural issue. It was a steel and uh, aluminum issue, but the retaliatory uh, tariffs are back to agriculture. So we're thrust into the spotlight. Our, our markets are disrupted, and uh, hopefully that'll be solved. But uh, it's, it's much more complex to uh, farm now than it used to. Uh, like I say, we're, uh, we're spending much more time, uh, I think, in meetings and trying to find solutions than we are out in the field. The other uh, interesting aspect, and we already touched on, on the interconnectedness between um, having labor to harvest a crop that is developed through access to water, but these different patches of land, these different uh, businesses, they're interconnected truly as an ecosystem. It's a living ecosystem. The soil lives. So what is planted and uh, what pesticides are used and what seed is used and how that seed is shaped, um, either naturally or through genetic engineering, um, all of that interconnects because if you have a dry field that has that does not have access to water next to your prosperous um, uh, areas um, it becomes a sponge of resource it takes away it starts leaching away um, and you can have windblown dust and and those kinds of uh, of issues that affect us all we're, we're concerned when sustainable groundwater management becomes truly effective that there will be idle ground throughout the uh, San Joaquin Valley here. And you're right, we can see issues with dust being put into the atmosphere very easily. We can see issues with uh, certain pests and diseases being harbored in that area that can affect adjacent uh, cropland. Uh, we're just not sure what to expect, but uh, we've addressed and we're going to address this at the state level in the uh, science advisory panel as one of the possible uh, ways we may be able to incentivize growers that do have to idle ground 
to be able to do something productive with that ground. Maybe use a little bit of water, a small amount, but, but somehow channel that into some type of productive land. I mean, we've seen a lot of solar go in on ground that's been taken out on the west side already, but there's only so much solar that the state is going to be, be able to, to use and produce, although we know that the new directive is going to be for more uh, clean, uh, clean electricity in the future. And this is where the, the collaborations with nonprofits and academics and, and other thought leaders, policy people, is so important. There are ways in which, so when, when land is taken out of agriculture, just because it is taken out of agriculture does not mean it doesn't have to be stewarded. Because as you point out, if you leave the land alone, that land can become a problem for the land that is productive. So you have to think now about what that actually means. How do you cultivate that land, not literally cultivate, not literally cultivate, but, cultivate but how but do you steward that land? No, so, that, and, and maybe we can find some ecosystem services that will fit, and maybe, maybe you know, we're gonna have to be creative about what we do and how we do with, uh, uh, how we affect that land because it could turn into a real problem for the state, I think bigger than anyone's realized. So I think if we're planning, we need to plan for what we're gonna be doing with that land. And it, it may take a little bit of money, but it may mm -hmm. prevent a much larger problem in the long run. Don Cameron, thank you so much for sharing the experience that you've had as a, as a businessman, as a, as a farmer, and as the president of the California State Board of Food and Ag. And thank you so much for your insights. Thank you, Mark. It's been a pleasure.